Hi, my name is jo Josie Blosser. And I'm Mary Scruggs. And this is Are You In Session? All right, well, thank you so much for joining us today for our uh, Are You In Session. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll have a little bit um, better technical luck than we did last month. Yeah, if you saw us last month, we were struggling a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. You may hear a little bit of repeat things, but... Mm -hmm. If you were lucky enough to watch the first one. Yes. But if you didn't, that's okay because we're going over it again today. Yeah, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you, yeah. Josie, for being here. Yeah, hopefully I don't <laughs> cough a whole lot. If you guys see something in my mouth, it's for sure because I have a cough drop. Mm, so Necessary. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> okay, so today we're going to talk about... Um, how we as therapists work on kind of controlling a couple of things. We're going to focus on our personal bias when we're being professionals and then also how our emotions come into play as mm -hmm. therapists. Yep, how we manage them. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I guess where would you like to start? Um, I think put the thing I would want to start on is for clients to know that we have emotions. Mm -hmm. So even when... Um, they're coming into therapy, and it's meant to be about them. The things that we discuss with them are still going to impact impact us as humans. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're going to have some type of emotional feeling about it. However, um, it is our job as professionals to stay contained in that. Yeah, I, yes. So I feel like a lot of times, like, I've had clients come in where they're like, I am just really wanting an unbiased person, like someone who has a more objective perspective, mm -hmm. which, yes, I can provide a more objective perspective, um, and we'll get into biases here in a minute, but it's like, right off the bat, that doesn't mean I lack emotion as far as our work with each other. Right, right. I mean, I, I'm sure some of our professors from grad school would hate to hear this. I will actually get teary in mm -hmm. sessions with clients because I like kind of mirror their images. Yeah. I don't make it about myself, but... I feel the things with them. I'm yeah, a very empathetic empathy. person. Empathy, that's the word. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So, I want to talk more about the whole, like, I want someone who's unbiased. Mm -hmm. And how you had said, like, that's the goal. We try to be unbiased. But yes. we have, there are some limitations to that. Yeah. I think it's, um, it was something that we learned in grad school together that I feel like when I heard it, I was like, oh, it makes sense. But I just hadn't considered it this way. It is impossible as human beings to not have any bias with anything, really. Right. But especially when you think about clients and um, their personal lives and what they're bringing. Mm -hmm. And instead of acting like we're just completely unbiased, we're completely objective, that's where I think our biases will actually kind of seep through if we're not, you know... Um, maintaining them, thinking about them, considering that doing our own work. Right. Which is why we should talk to someone. <laughs> um, and so it's like we've been kind of taught that you have to recognize what your bias is and then figure out what you need to do to manage it to effectively provide good therapy for, to people. Right, right. I mean, I think that's a huge key thing that you were talking about. We have to be aware of our own bias. Mm -hmm. If we are not aware of that, whether it's a, a bias for or against something, we're going to do a huge disservice to our clients because it may sneak up mm -hmm. um, in something we say or how we respond to a client simply because we're just not aware of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, as I tell clients, like things will have a way of coming out whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, as long as you can see it, you can manage it and mm -hmm. do what you need to do. Right. I feel like when we have a bias is when we really have to tap into our skill of empathy to like understand because again whether we're biased towards whatever they're talking about or we're biased against it um we then have to be empathetic which is kind of getting in that place with them and saying I'll sit with you and I'll understand mm -hmm. how would you describe your ability to exercise or demonstrate empathy in therapy um how do I <laughs> how do I demonstrate empathy well I feel like one part is I try to mostly be myself. Um, I don't want to, I, you know, I'm professional in my sessions, but I also 
try to use humor appropriately, um, depending on the client, of course. Like, some have dark humor like I do, and I'm like, oh, I can roll with that easily. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I always try to turn everything into a good question, too. So, like, if I feel a bias coming up, I'm like, okay, how do I ask this rather than be like, that's totally not right or, or whatever, I don't know. But more so just giving a place for... Um, let's sit here and think about what it is you're bringing up. I don't know if that makes sense mm-hmm. the way I'm explaining this, but I mean it makes sense to me. But <laughs> but I've you're biased with you for a while. Yeah, I'm biased. <laughs> I know we have a language of our own. Uh-huh. Um, How yeah. would you say you demonstrate empathy? Oh gosh, that's a great question. Honestly. Yeah, you asked it. Uh, that's when it gets put back on you, right? Huh? <laughs> right. Um, I would say the way I demonstrate empathy. So I think the cool thing about therapy and going to therapy is. Your therapist does not have to have lived the same life experience as you to be able to empathize with you and understand you. Now, there's a limitation to that understanding, Mm -hmm. but that's where empathy really comes into play. Mm -hmm. Um, Brene Brown has a really great video that... um, Yeah, we need to post the link. Look for the link (laughs) somewhere in our show notes. Um, It's a cute little animated YouTube video. It's like six minutes long. But it's a great video about the difference between empathy and sympathy. And I think what therapists do is really demonstrate that empathy of, like, we go down into the trenches with our clients, and sometimes we just sit there with them. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we're fixing things. It doesn't mean we're, you know, taking a lot of action. We're just sitting there and saying, like, hey, I'm here with you. It's okay for you to have these feelings or this experience you're not alone in that Mm -hmm. and just super validate it. Mm -hmm. And so with that, it may come with some questions and curiosity, um, which I think is what you were speaking to of like, help me understand this Mm -hmm. or how does it impact you this way and why, but all that to say, you're not alone and I'm here for you in this moment as you're going through this thing or you're discovering or you're growing or whatever it may be. Yeah. Yeah. You just explained that perfectly. Um, it's like, Let's just look at this picture together and mm-hmm. think about what are what are your options? What what is going on? Do we even need to talk about options yet? Like just it's kind of, I just like picture it as sitting next to them. I don't actually sit next to them, but I it's like in my mind I'm sitting next to them and we're just looking at the information. And we're like, okay, let's yeah, right. It's hard right. to look at this, right? It's hard to be dealing with this. It's whatever, right? Or it's great to be dealing with it. I don't know, <laughs> right? Um, there was something I was gonna say and it left my mind. I I think, you know, I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but I think something um, therapists often get confused for is that, like, we're major action people. Mm -hmm. And, like, of course we are, but a lot of times the action takes place outside of the therapy office. Mm -hmm. We are the ones sitting there with them. You know, we're kind of the, you know, we've got, like, pre-contemplative and contemplative and action, and Mm -hmm. we're sitting there in, like, that contemplative state Mm -hmm. and helping you look through all the feedback and the information. Yeah. Um, and then you get to go out and do the action. Yeah. So. That's where, like, I think sometimes so desperately we want people to tell us what to do with our lives. Mm-hmm. And like, on mm-hmm. one hand, sure, that would be nice to just give me a direction, but it doesn't mean it's the right direction. It's your life. Ultimately. I don't want someone right. telling me what to do. I mean, I, if they gave me the right answer, maybe <laughs> right. I knew it was the right answer, but no right. one knows that. No one knows that. Right. Even I don't know that. Um, and so that's where in thinking of empathy, it's like sometimes I think some things hit me harder than others. And it, I feel like for the most part, I think over time with practice, I've learned how to effectively manage my emotions inside and outside of the office. You know, I try to leave work at work and in, in, to a degree, but again, like we're not robots. Right. And so sometimes things are just going to hit me harder and I always have to figure out what to do with that information of right. emotions. Right. So I'm kind of thinking that would be a good segue to talk about like the green and red flags that you and I Mm -hmm. have seen with Mm -hmm. therapy. Um, So what are some green flags that stick out to you of this therapist is probably a good fit for me? Okay. So I love this. So obviously, Mary, you were saying this. I want to make sure it's very clear. These are green and red flags that Mary and I have identified as we have become therapists. It's our bias. (laughs) Yeah, it's absolutely our bias. Um, And as we have experienced therapy on the other side of the couch as, know, as the, the client. Yes. Um, so I would say the first and foremost thing that I look for in a therapist or I try to be as a therapist is someone that is safe and comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, I recognize and understand that I'm not meant to be everyone's therapist um, for whatever reason, but 
I hope that my clients feel safe and comfortable when they're with mm-hmm. me so that they can share as much or as little as they want to. Yeah, I feel like that's one of those things where it's kind of a gut feeling. It's like, <clears throat> man, they seem like a good clinician, and they probably are, but maybe they're just not a good fit for yeah. you. you got to have the right vibe. Yeah, exactly. The right energy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. What course. about you? Um, green flags. I would say that they... Um, are, well, back to what I was saying earlier, they're not telling you what to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, mm-hmm. like sometimes I, I would like that as the client. Right. Um, they uh, really are good about challenging you, um, putting putting stuff back on you so that you are really, in the end, building autonomy for yourself and recognizing mm-hmm. like, okay, these are questions I could be actively um, asking myself. Um, not that there's anything wrong with long-term therapy but sometimes I think it's good to know that like my therapist is considering what would help you get to the point where you feel so equipped to manage your life that you don't need to come every week right right so with that you're saying a couple of things like one therapy is about you Mm -hmm. so um what are your goals what are you trying to accomplish while Mm -hmm. you're here Um, what are you doing? I think that that's really important to note because it's important for two things. One, the therapist isn't talking about themselves or taking up too much space in the room. Mm -hmm. And also if it's about you, then that work means it's on you. Mm -hmm. So for better or for worse, for better or for worse. So if you want to achieve the change, if you want to achieve the goals that both you and your therapist have agreed to, you have to be the one to do it. Mm -hmm. The therapist cannot do it for you. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, it's how are they empowering you to feel comfortable to say, I can, I can manage life on my own one day without therapy Mm -hmm. or the majority of the time without therapy. Mm -hmm. And they're not just sitting there listening to you. Right. Like I've heard a lot of people say that like, it was fine, but all I felt like they did was just listen. And right. It's, it's therapy is so much more than that. It's so much right. more active. And I think there's a time and a place for that, but it mm-hmm. should not be the majority of the experience. Yes. Yes. So, and then I, you talked about something um, like how, how does your therapist equip you to be able to handle life on your own outside of therapy? Mm-hmm. Um, I think you're a pretty big homework assigner mm-hmm. or you try, try to, to do <laughs> some resources. Yeah. Um, that is not my strength as a therapist. <laughs> I will 1000% admit that. Um, but typically, or I, I don't know, I defy typical, I guess. Um, having, having a therapist who gives you something to think about, do, read, work on outside of therapy. Yes. Um, it looks obviously like different between you and I. You might be like, go read this book. Mm-hmm. I will probably be like, why don't you go think about this? Or why don't you go try this thing? It's very easy homework yeah um that doesn't take up a lot of time yeah but ultimately something is having to be done outside of therapy yeah yeah um i would say uh another thing sorry i was like thinking about homework (laughs) um boundaries i want my therapist to have good boundaries i want to have Mm -hmm. good boundaries with my clients um it it can be a slippery slope you're talking about personal stuff with your Mm -hmm. clinician and um It is ultimately, it's mostly the therapist's responsibility to make sure there are good, clear boundaries and that they are respecting them. Um, And we can talk about the red flags here in a minute. Yeah, Yeah, those boundaries are important. I think therapists are modeling what they expect for you to do in your own life. I don't know how many times I talk about boundaries as the therapist because Mm -hmm. they are such an important thing for a person to have in their life. Yes, yeah, I feel like... That's something that um, sometimes people forget. It's like seeing your therapist can almost be like seeing a parent. Like you're going to push the boundaries with them because you want to see if you can trust them, if they're Mm -hmm. safe. Mm -hmm. But what it is in reality is an opportunity for you to practice a relationship practice respecting a boundary practice right. setting a boundary even like right um with your therapist now of course the therapist might challenge you on that because and we like <laughs> a challenging therapist <laughs> right, right right um but it's still it's your treatment and you mm-hmm. get to you get to set boundaries yeah absolutely so then let's jump into what we have identified as maybe some red flags mm-hmm. you might see in a therapist yes so boundaries again healthy boundaries green flag mm-hmm. poor or lack of boundaries Red flag. Yes. So what would that look like in application? I was going to ask you the same thing. Um, Asked you first. (laughs) Now, everyone has their own style and way of communicating, but, like, if my therapist was texting me at 12 a.m., 
that right there is a red flag. Yeah. Also, just texting me alone. I don't know that I would feel comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if people realize that that's something they can consider being comfortable with or not. Right. Um, right. I think something that um, maybe the general public needs to know about therapists is that we are held to a very high ethical standard, mm-hmm. um, and that's maintaining confidentiality and privacy. Um, but with that, that means we cannot engage in dual relationships. Mm-hmm. And so they're... The, the nature of a therapeutic relationship is really quite odd. Yeah. Um, because we as therapists expect for people to share some very intimate and vulnerable things with us. And we withhold our own intimate and vulnerable things because we are not friends. Which is not a natural way for a relationship to go usually. Right. Right. And so a lot of times I think people, I mean, I know this is my experience as the client that I'm like, I want to know more about my therapist because I feel so exposed. Mm-hmm. I've just told her everything about me. She knows about my family and my dogs and whatever. And I feel like I know nothing about her, but she upholds good boundaries. She's also not going to take me up on my offer when I'm like, you want to go get dinner sometimes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I would never ask Hopefully. my therapist that. Yeah. But there is a high ethical standard among therapists that we don't have dual relationships with our clients. So it's if, a, if we meet each other professionally, we have to stay professional in our relationships. So even... You know, if I see someone at Starbucks, I'm not going to engage with them because we're not just friends that I I would say hi to. Whereas Mm -hmm. if I saw you at Starbucks, I'd be like, hey, Mary, Mm -hmm. how's it going? Yeah. Um, So we just have high, high standards. Yeah, yeah. We try to. (laughs) And that's where we're always trying to consult with each other and be Mm -hmm. like, what is the best practice? Because it's not all black and white. It's Right. It it can be vague. Right. Um, The opposite of... What my first green flag would be, would be, you know, I said a green flag would be feeling safe. The red flag would be you don't feel safe or comfortable yes. in the room. And that, again, could be a gut feeling. Right. And like, it doesn't always have to mean the therapist is not good at what they do. It's just mm-hmm. that something, there's a disconnect. Yeah. And that's okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and they should be willing to refer you out if need be. They should be... Um, actively checking in I think Mm -hmm. maybe just like making sure you're feeling comfortable right um I would almost say maybe even feeling too comfortable (laughs) like you do feel like buddies with your therapy not Mm -hmm. to a degree um that's where it starts to get a little vague a little blurry Uh um but again I think a lot of that is based on the gut feeling right right I think again it's impossible to as a therapist not eventually grow and care about your client yeah um, but it's our job as the professionals to uphold those boundaries yes. and make sure that the relationship stays professional. Yeah. Um, despite knowing that the grow and care for one another is there. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm thinking like kind of back to the point of when a therapist makes the work about them, that's mm. where it's like, are they allowing their biases and emotions to seep through? Like, are they actively doing the work? You can kind of tell when a therapist right. is not doing their personal work. Right. So let's talk more about that. So mm-hmm. we talked a lot about like our biases and our emotions and what we think are green flood, green flags and red flags for a therapist. But that means that we're having to do our own personal work to mm-hmm. be our best professional self. Yep. What does that mean? What does that look like? Yeah. <clears throat> so for me, um, I do see my own therapist and that helps a lot. Um, I also love having people around like you to talk to, to consult with, mm-hmm. um, I am, I mean, not to give an obvious answer, but self-care is always important to be doing. Like, right. it, it can be as simple as time management of like, wow, I saw a lot of clients that week and it kind of felt like too much. Maybe I need to consider reevaluating my schedule or whatever, because for some people they can see a bunch of clients and I've learned for me personally, I can only do so many. Otherwise, I'm either worthless professionally or personally Mm -hmm. like in order to maintain all of my relationships I have to be managing that well (coughs) excuse me yes um yeah absolutely I think that self-care that you know doing the same things we would tell clients to do is so important yeah so whether it's what you preach are you sleeping enough are you eating the right foods are you getting in some exercise are you going outdoors are you staying off of screen time Mm -hmm. um those are things we have to apply to our own self are you going to therapy? I, I mean, I have people ask me all the time, like as a therapist, do I have a therapist? Mm -hmm. And I get to say yes. And I, you know, good and well, at some point my answer to that was no. And Mm -hmm. I think 
it is a great thing for me to have a therapist because one, I have a personal life that things are you know, things are happening to that life. I'm yeah. not again. I'm not a robot. Yeah, I'm not a robot. Yeah. Um. So having my own therapist is so helpful. You know, no matter what that relationship looks like. Yeah. Um. I think another thing again going on with boundaries is leaving work at work. Mm-hmm. That can look different for our jobs. I think. <clears throat> right. We can't just leave like paperwork at work. I mean, yes. Right. But it's more than that. Right. Well, I think, you know, what is work? Then mm-hmm. how are we defining what work is? Can I? do paperwork at the office so that I'm not having to work when I'm at home. Mm -hmm. Sure. That's an easy boundary. I can 1000% do that. Um, Can I leave my emotions here at the office that are tied to some of the things that my clients are going through? Depends on the day. Depends on the day. Um, I try to have good boundaries. Mm -hmm. If I know everyone is safe, great. Um, But sometimes I'm impacted. Mm -hmm. Again, like my emotions get to have a place once everyone's gone Mm -hmm. and I get to work through that. And I think that's when it is not just leaving work at work. But I still have boundaries within that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, Whenever you find yourself with whatever you're comfortable with sharing, whenever you find that it's just one of those meetings where you're just like, man, things are just hitting me a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. Like what are some questions you ask yourself? Why? <laughs> um, you know, good start. <laughs> what's going on? I, that's a time for me to assess and analyze what's going on for me professionally, mm-hmm. individually. Um, why am I carrying things a little bit more? Is that because I am doing more of the work mm, than what I yeah. feel like, you know, the clients Am I working harder than my clients? Am I working harder than my clients? Um, am I caring more than my clients? Mm-hmm. Um Am I oftentimes focusing on something that's more um, distracting me from what's happening in my own personal life? Mm -hmm. You know, is it easier for me to worry about your problems because then I don't have to worry about mine? Mm. Good question. You know, so it's a lot of like self-assessment and some awareness of, okay, what am I doing that I'm focusing on this so much and what do I need to change that? Yeah. So those, yeah. those are kind of my questions, those are good questions that I dig into and figure out. Yeah. <clears throat> One thing I, I also ask myself why. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, okay, what have I been doing this week that may have been different? Oh, I was listening to more of my true crime podcasts. Mm. Probably not helpful mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. be doing all of that. Right. Um, or I watched more scary movies. I can't watch them as much as I used to anymore. Right. Um, am I overbooking myself, whether it be personally or professionally? Mm-hmm. It's just like a fun game to get to play. It's like, all right, what's happening? <coughs> right. Just <clears throat> figuring out how to have a healthy work-life balance, which is what something everyone has to do. Yeah. But for us, it's... It's, it's a lot of internal <clears throat> A lot stuff. of internal work. Yeah. Because people on the outside may not see it, but yeah. we feel it on the inside, and then it might make the job hard if we're not maintaining healthy self-care. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Something, too, that um, we've talked before is, like, I don't know if there's any therapist out there who doesn't have a friend or family member <laughs> asking for advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the time. Um, how do you usually respond when people are like, hey, Josie, can you give me free therapy? No. <laughs> no is your response. No, and no is a complete sentence. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, it is. So, yeah, I mean, usually my quick my quick and fast answer is no. Um, I cannot give you free therapy. I can be your friend. What's going on? Mm-hmm. I think I, and most therapists that I know, we have a brain that works a certain way, and we think about things in a very particular way that doesn't just turn off and turn on when I'm being a therapist. Yeah. However... I'm not going to sit there and dive into all of your personal problems. I'm not going to diagnose. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to advise or suggest or recommend. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to tell you, hey, you need someone who's a little bit more objective. You need someone who's not involved. It would be worthwhile for you to go get your own therapist. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to do the work, you're going to pay me for it. And I can't accept that because I have a dual relationship with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I love seeing people in my personal life go to therapists and I'm always happy to like give them some recommendations. Like that's something I can do. I always, I mean, I shouldn't do everything for them, but sometimes I'm like, I can even do, do some of the research and give you ones that I would recommend just based on their bios or whatever, if that's what you're looking for. Um, but yeah, that would be way too much if we were, um, giving free therapy. Um, Right. We, we do deserve to be compensated. We have Mm -hmm. worked very hard to have the skills that we do. Um, and that can be a whole other thing <clears throat> we get into. Yeah. Um, 
but I am, I will say, I feel like some of my skills have helped me in providing more empathic responses to people in my mm-hmm. personal life where mm-hmm. I'm like, maybe when I was younger and didn't know how to respond, I was like, I need to fix the problem for you. I need to give you advice when I didn't know what I was talking about. Right. <laughs> and so now I feel more confident in just like sitting with people. And that also helps me in the end because right. I feel less pressure <laughs> to give a certain answer. Right. Right. Yeah, gotta manage it all. Exactly. Well, yeah. I think having good boundaries, being able to say no, and still be empathetic are great. Yeah, yeah. You can be empathetic without mm-hmm. doing too much. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, is there anything else that you think about when you consider how we as human therapists manage our work that you feel like would be mm-hmm. helpful to share with our amazing viewers? I think just being humble enough to recognize you're still human. Mm-hmm. And... I don't ever, you know, I, I remember thinking, like, I'm going to finish grad school, and then I'm a candidate, and then I'm going to be licensed, and, like, I've made it. Um, I've done all those three things, and I big still things. think... Big things. and time-consuming things. Mm-hmm. Um, I still feel like I've got so much to learn and so so much opportunity to develop more as a professional, and so I want to keep that humility to recognize that. Yeah. And remembering that <laughs> as, like, a client. Like, your therapist is human, and... Um, I don't know. I guess just remembering that as, as need be. Right, right. Um, Last yeah. question right back at you. What would you say, like, to the question you asked me? I forgot what I asked you already. Um, it was a good one, right? <laughs> it's a good one. It's so good we remember it. <laughs> How about we end it in that? Then? Okay, sounds good. <laughs> I'm going to have a cough drop and I'll really start coughing. <laughs> so, okay, well, thank you so much for joining in and watching yeah. Are You In Session. As always, if you have follow-up questions, if you're watching this later, you just think of something later, feel free to reach out to us. Mm -hmm. Um, We should try to remember to upload the Brene Brown link. If not, just type in, like, Brene Brown Empathy YouTube. It should pull up. It's a little cartoon. It's a great one. I use it with clients a lot, too. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. So we will see you um, the first Friday of November for our next video. But until then, you're... More than welcome to come back and watch some of our other, um, not channels, videos, videos that are on Recovery TV. Um, and be sure to like and subscribe our pages so yeah. you can always get the latest and greatest updates. Yeah.